fire stones. I remember thinking what a beautiful sight the sea was. First came the earthquake, then the sea retreated almost to the horizon, but now it was coming back. The wave was high with white foam at its head, then it noisily rumbled closer. Something thumped on the sand behind me. I turned. There was a Champagne boy on the beach. Mountain wave, we must go, he urged. My mother had always told me never to follow a Champagne anywhere. So I turned my back to the boy. I felt a hand in my pocket. The Champagne boy was picking my pocket and my money pouch was gone. He darted between the palms on the edge of the beach. I knew I would never catch him, but for some reason the boy stopped. He turned and waved my pouch at me, a taunt that no thirteen-year-old boy could resist. I forgot the wave and ran. He ran towards the summit of a small hill dotted with neem trees. So did I. And then I noticed the water. The water from the wave was up to my knees. The Champagne climbed a giant tree right at the summit of the hill. He went up fast and sure-footed. I tried to copy, but my feet slipped on the rough bark. Then I was snatched from above. The Champagne boy had me by the shoulders, dragging me on to the neem tree. The boy squatted beside me. His eyes were wide, but his body was relaxed. He knew that there was nothing more to do. We survived. The wave flowed inland for what seemed like an eternity, but it never managed to uproot our ancient tree. Rescue boats came looking for survivors a long time later. There were two men in a canoe, paddling against the current. Climb down. This tree isn't going to last long, one of them said. The Champen boy leapt from the tree, landing neatly in the canoe. It took me a while longer feeling my way down the trunk. The canoe came within ten meters of the shore. The Champagne boy jumped onto the rim of the canoe and then onto the shore. Before disappearing into the jungle, he turned to look at me and patted his thigh right where a pocket would be. I automatically patted my own thigh. It was heavy with my money pouch. He had somehow put it back without my feeling a thing. I pulled it out, and of course all the money was there. And there was something else in it, two black stones. The Champagne boy had made me a gift of his precious fire stones. Then I understood. The theft had been a ruse to make me follow him into the jungle. He had risked his own life and saved mine. And all I had done in return was to mistrust